When I first saw the trailer for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I was conflicted. Harry Potter might be my favorite film series of all time, so the idea of going back into the world I knew and loved so much was exciting. But I also knew that film prequels haven't fared so well in recent memory. They usually reek of the studio's greed for more money as they try to reprocess the same proven and now tired story beats. I didn't want that to happen to the world of Harry Potter, and I certainly didn't want this prequel to possibly taint what I already loved about the original simply by association. I ended up watching Fantastic Beasts in its opening weekend. Audiences seemed pleased with the film. I remember a teenage girl sitting behind me blubbering at the end, boasting to her friend that she'd already seen the movie multiple times and couldn't wait to see it again. And critics generally approved of the film as well, rating it a fresh 73% on Rotten Tomatoes. But I wasn't a fan. During the film's opening hour, I almost fell asleep multiple times. It just wasn't captivating. Now before you dismiss this essay as bandwagon bashing, let me first state that Fantastic Beasts isn't a bad movie. The set design and costumes are tremendous, and I enjoyed the performances from the main characters. Fantastic Beasts isn't a bad movie, but it certainly is a flawed one. In this essay, I'm going to examine Fantastic Beasts and pinpoint exactly where it went wrong in comparison to Harry Potter. First, weak protagonist. Now to reiterate, I think Eddie Redmayne is a good actor. Even in terrible movies, he still manages to be a bright spot. I create life! And I destroy it. But the character of Newt Scamander isn't a strong, engaging protagonist. I believe there are four aspects necessary to make an effective protagonist. History, desire, villain, and change. As the audience, we need information on the protagonist in order for us to properly empathize with them, meaning we should care about them and understand why they're doing what they're doing in the story. We need to be invested in them and the journey they're about to embark on. So what do we know about Newt's commander? Well, unfortunately, not much. For about the first hour, all we know is that he's carrying magical creatures in his suitcase around New York City. We only get slight glimpses into Newt's personality and troubled past through conversation. Well, I'm, I'm sure people like you too, huh? Not really, no, I annoy people. Like his expulsion from Hogwarts. He was thrown out of Hogwarts for endangering human life. That was an accident. With a beast. And a strained relationship with Lestrange. That was a real close friendship you had at school. Well, neither of us really fitted in at school. But since we're kept at a distance from Newt, he's not engaging. It's harder for us as an audience to care or invest in him. The protagonist's desire or goal should be the driving force of the entire movie, pushing everything until the end. But again, since Newt's character is shrouded in so much secrecy, we don't even know what he wants until about 40 minutes into the movie. I'm gonna put you back where you belong, aren't I, Frank? To the wilds of Arizona. It's not a very effective desire either for the story because Newt never actually pursues his desire. And we find out at the end that he could have simply released it as soon as he landed in New York City. But then his goal shifts to finding his suitcase and then catching the loose animals, which shifts again to catching the Obscurus. It's unclear, and so it's too difficult for the audience to attach their expectations. The villain is the antagonistic force keeping the protagonist from his goal. But without a clearly defined goal, we're not even sure who the villain is. Is it the animals? Graves? The Ministry? The Mean Church Lady? Could it be... Sing? I don't know, but that rising tension is missing throughout the film. And after watching our protagonists struggle throughout the story, we expect them to change or grow in some way. Does people change you? Yes. I've changed. I think. I'm maybe a little... If they're at the same point emotionally at the end of the film where they were at the beginning, then what was the point of going on the journey? We just walked in a circle. Or even worse, we didn't move at all. Now, let's put this same checklist up against Harry Potter and Jacob Kowalski, two characters that I believe make stronger protagonists than Newt Scamander. Harry is a kind-hearted orphan living with his abusive family in a broom closet. Jacob is a considerate, poor war veteran. Harry is investigating and protecting the Sorcerer's Stone. Jacob wants his own bakery. Harry is battling Voldemort, Draco, and Snape. Jacob is battling the bank. Harry transformed from an ordinary orphan into a hero wizard with a new loving family. And Jacob, the poor, lonely factory worker, gets his dream job and falls in love. Now this is a very simplified list, but an important one if you want a strong protagonist for your audience to follow. 
It's also important to note that both Harry and Jacob serve as our bridge, connecting us to the wizarding world. Everything is new and exciting to them, and we get to experience all the surprises and wonder through their eyes. It enables us to connect to them on a deeper level, but nothing seems to surprise Newt. He already knows everything and is accustomed to this world. It's just another way to further distance ourselves from Newt. And that's not what you want from a protagonist. Second, Unbalanced Tone. The Harry Potter films did an excellent job of balancing childlike whimsy with darker elements in each individual book and movie. And as the movies progressed, the balance shifted with the growing ages of the children and the growing drama surrounding them. But each moment artfully walked the line befitting the film's tone, never straying too far and never seeming out of place. The darker moments were built up to, earned over time. But in Fantastic Beasts, I was shocked by the mishandled tone. In one scene, there are goofy creatures getting into silly situations, and in the next, there are children being savagely beaten. This happens time and time again throughout the film. Silly animals, and then murder. Silly animals, and then executions. As opposed to carefully walking the line tonally, the creators went for simple shock and awe moments, jumping from one extreme on the spectrum to the next without ever finding a balance. Overall, the film just wasn't as fun and exciting as the Harry Potter franchise. Third, slow pacing. There's a common error amongst writers of mistaking stuff for story. Characters, plot, setting, goals, antagonists, all serve the larger story that we're watching. And when all the elements are working together, they're constantly pushing the story forward, building towards the climax and the ultimate conclusion. But stuff is the tiny minutia or details writers can get lost in, mistaking them for the story. The result is cool, explosive, shiny, colorful stuff that doesn't ultimately matter and ends up grinding the story's momentum to a halt. It's like putting a new basket, shiny bell, and tassels on a broken bicycle. It may look the part, but it all doesn't matter because the most important function isn't working properly. It's the mistake of focusing too much on the wrong points, and that's what happened in Fantastic Beasts. This is the first screenplay J.K. Rowling has ever written, and unfortunately it shows. The same intricate details that made her Harry Potter novels come to life ended up drowning her screenplay for Fantastic Beasts. This mistake is most noticeable in the scene where Newt and Jacob first arrive at the Goldstein sisters' apartment, when they enter the Ministry of Magic, but the most blatant example is when Newt and Jacob both enter Newt's suitcase. The entire scene lasts about 10 minutes, and completely stops what little momentum the story had barely built up to at that point. In this scene, J.K. Rowling accomplishes a few things. Jacob is healed, Newt reveals his reason for traveling to America, and Rowling plants a number of setups that will pay off later in the story. Setups and payoffs are great storytelling devices, but a scene also needs to push the plot forward. Otherwise, in the moment, it's just repetitive and tedious. We're shown animal after animal until we see an ominous entity that offers a little suspense, but it's just offered to the audience as another setup. We're not given anything in the moment. In Robert McKee's book, Story, he says, A scene is a story in miniature. A scene is unified around desire, action, conflict, and change. In each scene, a character pursues a desire related to his immediate time and place. But this scene objective must be an aspect of his super objective, or spine, the story-long quest that spans from inciting incident to story climax. So what's the point of this entire scene in the suitcase? What does Newt need to accomplish? Nothing. J.K. Rowling merely needed a way to introduce setups for later payoffs, which resulted in a 10 minute long scene of stuff, but not story. Compare this scene to the Diagon Alley scene from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Not only are we introduced to a magical new world, but practically, Harry has a checklist of items he has to buy for school, so already there's a task to accomplish within the scene. We get a glimpse at a mysterious item in Gringotts, a setup for a later payoff, and we're introduced to a foreboding connection between Harry and Lord Voldemort. Knowing the difference between stuff and story is crucial, because if the stuff isn't pushing the story forward, it means absolutely nothing. Warner Brothers has already announced four more Fantastic Beasts sequels, because, well, of course they have. I'm cautiously optimistic, though, and hopeful about the future installments. J.K. Rowling has a brilliant mind, and there's so much more to play with in this rich, vibrant world. But the problems that plagued Fantastic Beasts must be fixed moving forward, if this franchise is ever going to resonate with audiences the same way Harry Potter did years ago.